How psychedelic mushrooms have changed my life. I'm going to go through three or four accounts of when I took mushrooms and how they've impacted me. I've taken mushrooms a handful of times. I honestly can't tell you how many times I have, but most of them have been microdoses. There are four journeys that are really imprinted in my mind and have been catalysts for my, let's just say, awakening. Honestly, greater awareness or whatever you want to call it. I feel like plant medicine in general has really helped me become who I am today in a way that it has shed layers of fake shit of beliefs that I had about myself that became my reality because I was so attached to these ideas I had about myself and that I was unworthy, that I wasn't good enough, I just all these things that were plagued with growing up and it doesn't help that in our childhood we go through a lot of trauma and a lot of conditioning that doesn't allow for our true self to truly shine. I feel like most of us don't even know who our true selves are because we've grown up with such dense conditioning that you gotta be a certain way to like be in this world. Psychedelics have helped me shed those layers in the way that you start to see the bullshit. You start to see the bullshit not only in your life but in the world for me at least in my experiences so i'm just gonna briefly go through these accounts the first time was in college i was either 18 or 19 i was doing it with my partner at the time he wasn't really my partner we were really kind of dating i actually did a handful of psychedelics with him so one night we impulsively decided to take shrooms because he usually has some substance on him but anyway it was like 7 p.m at that point my roommate wasn't in town so we decided to do it i'm a, we're i went to school in boston we were like in a park <laughs> or something at night i took the mushrooms and we went up to my dorm okay so we're lying in the bed remember it happening really fast out of nowhere i just realized i was tripping and i remember getting visions of my life and my memories just flashing before me like an album like if you opened up an album with a bunch of photographs and you flip through them really quickly that's what i saw and i also start to see the internet and it looked like this orb, this spherical thing with tons of facets on them. So the internet was basically in visual form. I could see it. And I realized how much time we spend in this fabricated reality. And it's so interesting. And I, I was like, what the fuck? Most of my life is spent through a screen. That's scary. And... What else happened? Oh, so I was in school at the time and I remember thinking like, oh shit, I have to go to my internship on Monday and I have to go to class on Monday. That makes no sense. And I remember just feeling so distraught and sick and twisted inside of me thinking about schedules and classes that I had still had to go to and all these obligations that I had in this fabricated world that I was living in. Like my everyday existence just became bullshit because at the time I was actually not in the best space in my life. I was, I hate to use the word depressed, but to be honest, I was depressed and I was anxious and I was just riddled with worry and anxiety constantly because I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do with my life. I was in school for graphic design. 
I was good at it, but I wasn't passionate about it. I was, I just felt lost and confused and I had no, I had no like anchor. I was really ungrounded and like barely had any friends. I had like a couple of foreign exchange students, student friends, but otherwise I just spent all my time with this dude and did drugs with him. <laughs> um, anyway, I was in a bad space in my life. And the truth of that really came to the forefront in that trip. Oh, okay, and another really beautiful thing that happened though during the trip was, um, I remember caressing his belly or side or something. And I remember I closed my eyes, I was caressing his skin and it felt like I was caressing the terrains of the earth. Everything was so huge and so small at the same time and so delicate and precious and everything I touched felt magical because my senses were amplified and everything just felt so magical and good, like so nice. And then, so I have these string lights that I hung up in my dorm. I remember reaching out to them and rubbing my hand against the string lights and thinking that I was, it felt like a, I was, <laughs> sounds so weird but I, like i was caressing it, the umbilical cord of the earth with my hand and it felt like just so amazing there are no other words to describe it it just felt i just felt a lot of love there was one point in the trip where he looked at me blank in the face and i looked at him next thing i know i feel this warm trickle running down my leg i'm like What's going on? Are you okay? I look down and I'm realizing that he's peeing on my leg and on my mattress. But I didn't register in my mind that like he was peeing. I was like, wait, is this right? Is this supposed to be happening? Because at that point I had no concept of what was right or wrong. I was just like, okay, this is happening. I'm confused. It's really warm and wet. What do we do? He just looked at me blank in the face and just pissed himself. I mean, he was gone at that point. <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> anyway, pretty much we just ended up falling asleep in his piss and we woke up the next morning. It's gross to <laughs> drench in his piss. Oh, so so gross but we woke up and we were like what the fuck happened but anyway i remember that day that morning obviously we cleaned up the sheets and stuff but that morning his dad picked us up to go back to his house and i remember we were driving through boston and i was looking at all of the buildings and stuff and just complete and utter awe like everything looked so new and so beautiful like i've never seen boston like that before and that was another really cool thing about the trip is like having a fresh pair of eyes to see the world and even though like moment there were moments that felt like really scary and disorienting because it felt like my reality was kind of just crumbling before my eyes and the things that I thought were important were just like no this is not you this is not you and it was hard to confront those things and I mean I've I've known I've known for a long time that like I wasn't going to live a conventional life, but I tried to fit myself in that mold for so long because I had no other choice at that point. Like my parents paid for three fourths of my college years and I needed to graduate. So I just kept going to classes and I, I don't regret it though. I'm actually really thankful I got to go to school because that's how I learned how to do design, how to edit videos, how to do all the things that I actually needed to do, needed to learn to actually like start my YouTube channel and stuff. So everything has its purpose, but at that point in my life, I was just so lost. Okay, on to the next. Um, I wanna talk about one with the same guy I did. I went to Acadia, Maine with him for a few nights and we were hiking kind of at the peak of one of the mountains up there. That's when he took out his shrooms 
and we ate them. I don't know how much I ate yet again, but I remember walking down the mountain and feeling it kick in and feeling really nauseous and feeling gross and anxious and like, oh, this is a bad idea. We just shouldn't have done this. Eventually we found this nice flat area that wasn't quite at the, the bottom yet, but we were kind of like in the middle and it was, there's no one around. So we just decided to set up camp there, which was just like a sleeping bag. I don't even remember what I did, but I probably sat or just stood for a long time. And at that point, the stars, I mean, the sun started setting and the sky slowly changed from blue to a light orange, pinkish, to like an amber color. And I remember the shoes were kicking in at that point. I was just so in awe of the sky. It was just so beautiful. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life was witnessing the sky just change colors. And then eventually the stars started to come out. There's something about looking at the sky that brings me such like, it just makes me feel so reverent and so inspired and so deeply moved. And like everything on shrooms is amplified. So that was like one of the first times I've ever felt that moved and that amazed of, of how beautiful and profound life actually is and how precious it is. So July 4th, probably 2017 or 18, I was home alone at the house that I grew up in. So I impulsively decided to shove a bunch of shrooms in my mouth. Next thing I know, I'm really confused. And I remember going back and forth between the bathroom and my bedroom several times, just like walking back and forth, wondering what's going on. So at that point, my concept, my ideas, and my definitions of everything completely wiped. Imagine like clearing out the disk, the, the disk drive in your laptop of everything. That's literally what happened to me. I felt like I was trapped though. I felt like I was an alien all of a sudden inhabiting a human body. And I was so confused because I was like, I was looking down at my hands and I'm like, what is this? Am I stuck in this forever? I was like, I was pure consciousness. What did I write down? I like wrote it down here. Okay, and I felt stuck and trapped in a dimension and stuck in this weird ass, gross body. I just, everything felt gross. And so my next instinct was I went to the bathroom, took off all my clothes. I turned on the shower. I looked at the shower, like everything was just icky. I turned it on. I stepped into the shower and it was like freaking cold. And at that point, I didn't know how to turn it up so that it would warm up. So I was just like cold and wet in the shower, confused as hell as to what was going on. <laughs> and, and then I just got so uncomfortable to the point that I just like, I managed to turn off the shower. I stepped out. At this point, I was cold and wet and confused. And so I just sat on the bathroom tiles, just like, what is going on? I was just so out of it. Slowly and steadily, I regained consciousness. So at this point, I got up, I went back into my bedroom. I like laid on my, my bed for a while. When you're in shrooms, breathing feels so good. You can really feel how the breath is literally life force energy running through you. Like on shrooms, it's just so much more intensified. Um, so I was just breathing a lot. And then I felt called to go sit down at the piano. And since at this point, I, I regained enough awareness that I took out my laptop. I went on the webcam app and I hit record. And I recorded myself playing the piano for like an hour or two. I forget how long the video actually is. 
but I remember just bawling my eyes out. I never cried so hard in my life uh, as I was hitting the keys on the piano. Every key, every sound, every note, like the sounds felt like my emotions being played out in sound. Because the thing about shrooms is that your senses start to overlap a lot too. So uh, this, every sound felt like an emotion to me and it felt like I was playing my emotions out. Which made me bawl my freaking eyes out because I felt like at that point in my life, I was suppressing so much and I was just... It was, it was like one of those times in my life where I was just not living my truth and expressing myself. So, so yeah, that was like, that was also a very memorable trip. Generally, from all of these experiences on shrooms, I've learned that everything is bullshit, <laughs> but like, not necessarily in a bad way. I think we've come down here on earth to experience such disconnect. Disconnect from nature and God and source and from who we truly are in order to reunite with who we truly are, reunite with God, reunite with nature. I think we've come down here to inhabit these meat suits, to experience this plane through our five senses to experience disconnect and there's something really beautiful about that at the same time it can be extremely painful but it can be extremely elating and rewarding and i believe that's why i come i came down here every trip is going to be different every trip is going to amplify what you're already feeling and what you're already going through in life for me i've had some extremely beautiful, awe-inspiring, profound moments. The most profound of my life, to be honest. You feel the beauty and the love that everything is made up of. And it's one thing to know that that's true and another thing to truly feel it. Know it with your body and your heart and your soul and every ounce of your being. That's what shrooms has allowed me to feel. And that feeling will always be there for me to refer to, reference when I need to reach out to that feeling. When I'm wrapped up in my day-to-day -day shit, like my worries and my, my human life, you know? You tend to forget how precious life is. And now that I have that emotion, that feeling in my library of emotions that I could refer to. Now I feel like I have that tool to like remind me of, to like to be here and to love here when I feel like angry, when I feel like I want to disconnect and separate myself from whatever, whoever is pissing me off and making me feel sad. It's like reminding myself to love it, to love just experiencing, love feeling, love feeling everything, all the emotions. Because none of the emotions are good or bad. Like obviously we like to feel joyous, we like to feel elated and euphoric and happy, but like there's so much beauty and sadness and anger too. And it's just like allowing those emotions to come up so that we can process them and shit. That's like another thing that shrooms has allowed me to do is process so much pent up suppressed built up shit emotions are energy in motion they get stored in our bodies they manifest themselves as tenseness or muscle strain or even i believe cancers and illnesses at a certain point if we don't face them and confront them they just turn into debilitating physical manifestations that are that are illnesses that are dis-ease. So it's so important to process these emotions. But most of the time, I don't, I don't even think most people know that these emotions are in them because of how distracted we are from ourselves, how we're constantly going from one stimulating thing to another, how we're just constantly on our phones and 
Shrooms is healing in, in that way. Healing because it forces you to confront a lot of things. And that may be scary and painful, but to live a life where you're constantly suppressing your emotions and constantly disowning feelings that you'd rather not confront and face, these memories that you'd rather not face and look at, like living that life is more detrimental in the long run. They, they weigh you down quite literally. So with plant medicine and shrooms, it's like here, here it is, this is how you feel. Now it's time to, for you to go through it. And I remember bawling my eyes out so hard to the point that it hurt. <laughs> it hurt to cry physically. I was like, oh my God. I didn't realize how many freaking tears were in me. But it's also the opposite, you know, like I've laughed so hard. I've laughed like a ridiculous amount on shrooms. And so it's literally just expressing everything, the whole range, the whole rainbow of emotions. Okay, and I guess the last thing is shrooms has, like I said, it's peeled back the layers of this fabricated reality. And I don't want to say fabricated in the way that it's like fake. I don't really know how to describe this otherwise, but for me in my own life, I, I really did not want to work a nine to five life for the rest of my life just to retire at 60 and like go on vacations. And like, I knew that that shit was bullshit since I was like nine. I don't even know how old, but I remember having a thought where I was like, I don't want to do that. As a kid, I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to be a kid forever. <laughs> but anyway, your idea of what you think should be the way or how society likes it for it to be is going to school, going to college, getting a degree, going into so much debt, and then working a job that you either eh, don't really like or you hate and you're just like pretending to be something that you aren't. And as you're doing this, you are forfeiting who you truly are and what you truly love and what truly lights you up. It's just like, it, it's really simple. It's like your hobbies, what are you interested in? Those are the things that we should be nurturing and attending to, but this society tells us that we have to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, and make a ton of money. Obviously things are shifting right now because there are so many creators out there. There are so many people utilizing the internet and social media to put their creations out there, which is so cool to see. Oh my God, it's so amazing. But even for me, like I knew that I didn't want to be a graphic designer my entire life. I knew that I was good at it, but I knew that I didn't want to work for a company. I want to express. I want to express myself. I want to be myself and I want to play and I want to laugh and I want to share my thoughts with the world. Like that's, that's where I truly feel lit up and inspired. And that's where like I get so much energy from. Cause I love it. I love it. I love doing it. I love creating. I love making, editing videos and painting and singing and just expressing myself and in, in like all these different ways. That's who I truly am. And so I don't know how much you know about my personal story while well, this is getting long. Basically, I went to school, I got an under five job at WGBH, their company that produces a third of PBS programming. So I was part of the creative team and I designed a bunch of DVDs for PBS programs like Nova and Frontline and stuff like that. And I was doing that for like five months. I was working 40 hours a week, staring at a screen for eight hours a day. And I was like, fuck this shit, I can't do this anymore. I, it got to a point where like, I was so distraught in my job that I literally would just cry every day during lunch. I would isolate myself in the telephone room and I would just like cry because I did not want to be there. But I was so scared of quitting because I didn't want to let down my parents. I didn't want to feel like I wasted all this, wasted their money and wasted my money on this education 
that led me to getting this job. It didn't truly feel like the right thing for me. And so I quit my job and I didn't let my parents know until like months later, but basically that was maybe four or five years ago. At this point, I haven't had a regular job since. Yeah, so that's how my life has changed. Thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, like and subscribe and all that jazz.